Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting little knife right here. This is the Real Steel G5 Metamorph. Um, but first off, in the name of full disclosure, uh, this guy was sent to me directly from Real Steel, um, which is, uh, the, 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 well, the company who makes it. Um, but actually, there's an interesting backstory there. Sometime back, I did a review of the Real Steel G5, uh, uh, not Metamorph, that's this guy, of the uh, Megalodon, that is. And um, I it was not a good review because the knife was threadlocked shot, and I couldn't get in there, and that made it basically disposable. I actually ended up with a very, very classy email from Real Steel's customer service or somebody or another, maybe a week after the reviewed ad, saying, you know, hey, Nick, we're really sorry that you had a defective one on your table. That's, that sucks. That's not okay. And we don't want the, you know, they're not all supposed to be like that. Is there any way we can get you a better one, etc.? And it was a really well done email. And it came across as just the kind of response I'd like to see from a maker to a negative comment. Like, yeah, we see what you're saying. That, 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 that's awful. We're trying to do better. Can we help? Um, That's the kind of thing I want to see here. And so as a part of that, we, you know, we open the conversation and they're going to send me one of those when the new versions are available. But more importantly, I asked them, you know, hey, what, what's the deal with the Metamorph? Because the Metamorph is something that my buddy Keith had showed me a long time ago. He had one of it as his carry piece. And, um, you know, I, at the time I didn't pick it up because I was in the process of moving and whatnot. But I, at the same time, I, I was curious about it. And they seemed to go out of stock, etc. I said, you know, hey, if they're still available, can you just send me one of them? And uh, they, they said, yeah, sure. Why not? And so I told them as always, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Heck, I just finished talking about the ugly. <laughs> Some of their products prompted this. Uh, but nevertheless, they sent that along, so uh, we have to assume this is the best quality controlled one of these ever, and I've done my best not to let that influence my review. But there you go. Minute and 41 seconds worth of full disclosure. That's what's going on. That's what's happening on this channel, and this guy will go up for my next charitable auction. Uh, so there you go. Um, next thing, let's go ahead and jump into the size comparison. Uh, sometimes I feel like a jackass with a full disclosure thing, but not only is it like FT mandated. Um, but it's also just a, I don't know, it's the right thing to do. So even if it takes a bunch of time, sometimes it's, yeah. Anyways, um, so this is a size comparison here. Um, and this is also the right thing to do. Um, because here I'm comparing it to your rat number two and your rat number one. And so you can see here in terms of sharpened blade length, we're very similar to the rat one. And in terms of overall blade length, we're not so far off either. Um, and it's a lot bigger than the rat two. Here it is against your, um, Spinaco Delica, and I'm now realizing that I completely forgot the other knife that I wanted to pull in for the comparison here, and that is this little guy right here. This is the Booze Blades Smoke, um, which is another kind of long, long, uh, kind of flippy, front flippy, steak knifey sort of affair. Um, and so, uh, there, there, there you go. And then finally, like I said, I already told you the background story, so, uh, yeah, I think we can skip that part of the, uh, my notes up there. So let's go ahead and just jump into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of this very interesting little knife right here. So to start with, um, on the good side, this guy is tall and thin, and that actually makes it quite nice to carry. Coupling it with this deep carry clip here, this guy more or less disappears in the pocket. Um, it's not super heavy, it's not, and so as a result, it's just like, it's there, but you don't care. And that's the very best thing for a knife to be. It's there with you, ready to work, but not really a pain in your neck on days, or times when you're not using it, that is. Um, so that's good. Um, and that deep carry clip does work well, although the screws are relatively prominent, underneath it, which they could definitely fix in the future. Um, next thing, this is using a, well, it has a beautiful action, and it is using needle bearings. As you saw during the disassembly, this is actually the first knife on my table that I've been able to get apart, at least, that uses needle bearings. And a needle bearing is like a normal ball bearing, except it's, it's rectangularly shaped, kind of like this guy, and so it is able to support the blade on more than just one single point as a ball bearing would. It's able to support the blade in a flat way, and so... Is that like a big deal? Am I like, oh God, needle bearings are the only way to, no, not remotely, but it's, you know, it's nice to see. It's unusual and it's well done here. So that, that, that's good. Next thing, the blade on this guy is 12C28N, uh, which is a, a fine steel. And so in terms of your relatively budget focused steels, it's one of the better ones out there. It is a, a pretty solid steel. It's good to go for everyday carry. Um, my feelings on 12, uh, 14C28N have changed as I've used it more often. It's, it's, it's fine. It works just fine. And like I said, in a knife that's on the budget end of things. Yeah, it works. Um, but the blade itself is quite nice in other ways, too, because you can see here it's got a very nice sharpening choil. It comes down to a relatively thin edge here. You can see behind the choil there, it's relatively thin. The stock on it is not terribly thick, which is beautiful. Um, and it is, it, this, the tip on this guy does really thin out, which makes it a very nice cutting tool for a lot of everyday tasks. I mean, if you're, if you're busting out boxes and envelopes with this guy, 
Oh yeah, it's gonna work nicely. So I, I like very much the blade on this guy. Next thing, this is relatively lightweight. Um, I'll throw it on the scale here, and actually I'll measure the blade first. We're coming in right around 3.5 inches. It could conceivably come in slightly above if the cop really, really dislikes you. Um, but the simple fact is, for three and a half inches, you're getting 2.5 ounces, 2.57, I guess, ounces out of that, and that's that's pretty impressively lightweight. Um, this guy being made of, uh, I believe, large chunks of aluminum here with some uh, nested liners. Ah, that's that's nice. Um, the, the, the lightweightness of this guy, coupled with that deep carry clip, we'll talk about that in a little bit here. Um, but that, that that's a beautiful thing. Um, next thing, the construction on this guy is quite solid. Um, it, meeting both that it is solid in terms of just like I'm not able to bend it or anything like that. Um, but it's just it's it's well made, generally speaking. Uh, all the things fit together well. I, I can't argue with the construction here. And then finally, on the good side, this is a budget friendly front flipper. Um, we need more of these worth a damn. And you you know, for 60 bucks, I think that's, that's absolutely solid. And especially given that it is an interesting design, I'm really glad to see Front Flip is getting a little bit more budget penetration because, you know, there have been budget Front Flippers from other companies before, um, but they don't tend to be super compelling. And so seeing one that is... Nice. I like that. And so to me, at least that's what's good here. It is a budget front flipper, and that's not super common and should be more common than it is. Uh, the construction on it is pretty solid. It's lightweight with a nice blade, needle bearings, and a deep carry clip. And it's tall and it thins and it carries... It thins. Well, well, sure, I guess it thins. Why not, right? Um, It thins and it carries well. So there you go. On the great side to me is the design on this guy. This is a really pretty design. It's an unusual design, but you know, little details here, like this little bit of uh, almost harpoon swedge going on here, coupled with this grind line up here, coupled with a sharpening choil, coupled with these little steps here. This has a very technology sort of, this is vaguely sci-fi. And I kind of like that a lot. I can see why they're calling it the metamorph, because it's got a little bit of that sort of, uh, you know, futuristic thing, coupled in with this uh, these beautiful grooves here in the handle here. I just, I like this design a lot. It's very futuristic and, you know, coupled with things like the solid jimping here, it makes it a knife that is both very futuristic, but also quite attractive and works pretty well. And with the intricate texturing one here in this little area, I, 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 even the, the pivot screw on it, it's just nicely designed. It's a pretty knife. The designer here, who is Ostap Hell, uh, is, is doing good work and I, I appreciate that very much. So to me, that's what's great here, is that this is not just a, an inexpensive knife, an inexpensive front flipper at that, but also, and by the way, this little area here is actually slightly concave, uh, which is kind of unusual. But anyways, um, it's just, it's, it's nicely designed. It has the look of a knife that's not just meant to be cheap, but that's also meant to be attractive. Um, so that's, that's what's great to me. On the bad side, um, the, the price on this guy, like I said, I think it's fine. I think it's fair, but it's also not the kind of value, uh, I don't know. Maybe it is, but it's a little higher than I've come to expect because look, this feels more in line in terms of construction and whatnot with the sorts of uh, lesser expenses expensive, like, uh, you know, the things you expect from, like, uh, Ruaiki or Civivi. I don't have a Civivi handy at the moment, but, um, you know, that this feels more like those $40 knives. Certainly, you pay a little more for the design, you may pay a little more for the front flipping, etc., the, the machining, whatever, but it's not like, oh my god, face-melting value that I, I've come to expect from companies like Real Steel and other Chinese OEM sorts of things. Not a huge deal, but it's, it's you it could maybe get that down a little bit. Um, And then, on the, uh, the other thing on the bad side is the, the tent on this guy isn't super amazing. It works, but there, it's definitely, it is easy to miss a flip, and we'll talk about why in a second there, but uh, the, the, to me, the detent on this guy could stand to be a little bit hotter, and that would make this guy a much better front flipper, because it would be a little bit more reliable, because if you, you know, get past that detent, uh, then it will absolutely lock up, I don't know, um, so I'm not a big fan of the detent, those are the two bad things here, is that 60 bucks is maybe a little higher than I might expect, and the detent isn't amazing, which makes it a little hard to flip, but the, the, the bigger issue here is what comes in the ugly, so on the ugly side, to start with, this is unfortunately pretty slippery. Um, even with this texturing on here, this is not a knife that's, uh, and a lot of aluminum has that trouble. Uh, it just, it becomes very slick in the hand. Um, and even with the texturing, there, there have been times where I'm just like, I'm grabbing for this guy and it's just not happening. And so that, that itself is a problem. But it, it compounds with the next issue, which is that it is kind of tricky to manipulate. I'm willing to admit this could be a hand size issue 100%. Um, because, you know, I'm generally good at, ha at front flippers, but on this one, I'm not so much. Part of this is because uh, in order to use a front flipper, you need to grab properly this other side here. And because my 
fingers are on this relatively slick aluminum. I found it uh, very, very often. It's a little trickier here than normal because I'm constrained by a camera that's like three inches above this here. But nevertheless, I found it uh, occasionally tricky to get that out. In fact, at one point, I even dropped it trying to front flip this guy. I am generally good at front flippers, but I am not good at this one. I suspect I would have an easier time if my thumb were longer and I could get all the way up to the top there with my fingers further down and using the clip. But the slickness of the body, coupled with the fact that there's not much going on here, coupled with the relatively short thumb means that this guy is trickier than most to pop open. But the worst part about that there is the this the top of the knife is shaped I think precisely wrong for a front flipper. What I mean by that is you've got this little area here, you've got this little point on the top there. And now watch as I open this knife manually here. You can see that at this point as your finger is sliding cuz remember for a front flipper your thumb is sliding along the top here. But it's very very easy as your as your finger is sliding along the top here. Here you've got really good leverage. You're pushing, you're pushing, you're pushing. But then then there comes this point right here where suddenly the part that your thumb is pushing against disappears underneath the scale almost entirely. And the fact is you have this really big area up top here where there's a, there's a fair amount of gap there. And so unless you have already finished the front flip in terms of inertia by this point, it's going to actually throw you off of the front flip a tab at the top here. And so that means that, especially coupled with that softer detent, really the entirety of the flip needs to be finished by this point, and this just needs to happen by inertia in order for the, fi the flip to finish. And so uh, compare that to other knives where, for instance, take this guy, this is the booze, uh, booze blade smoke, where there is not that issue, where you hold it and you can continue here, I'll pop it past the harder detent there, and you can continue flipping it through the entire range up until the very end there. That just makes things a lot easier to flip, and it means that even if you don't get a great, you know, shot off the detent to start with, um, it's going to reliably open, whereas on this guy, there have been times where it doesn't. And so, unfortunately, coupling th those three things, the fact that it's very slippery, the fact that it's uh, a little bit tricky to manipulate just in the hand in general to front flip, and then the fact that it will toss you off the front flip by using this top ridge here, that's just fundamentally not a good thing. And so, if they had rounded off this top portion here so you had full contact with the front flip a tab throughout the use, I think that would be a lot better. But Unfortunately, that's kind of a design over uh, uh, form over function sort of situation. It makes it a little less ideal for me. And so those are the ugly things. It's just that it becomes kind of a perfect storm of a little tricky to flip here, um, especially with my smaller hands because of those three things. Ah, And then sometimes, by the way, what I, you just noticed is that I did one of these guys where I was trying to get a good grip on it, and then it rotated out of the way, and then the knife popped up and hit the pad of my hand here. This is not a dangerous thing necessarily, but it's certainly not a great one. One. So, um, to me, that's what's ugly. It just becomes very hard to front flip with the confluence of those three issues. So, final conclusion, this is at some level a fine knife. I mean, it's a good front flipper for the price, I suppose. Um, it has a very decent blade. It's a nice styling, easy carryability. Unfortunately, it does have some downsides. Um, the detent, like I said, isn't stellar. The value isn't exactly a real steal. Okay. Uh, but more importantly, the knife is pretty slick, and flipping it, all it's workable, but it's not stellar and particularly for those of us with smaller hands or who want to try and flip throughout the range, this little top part is a big problem. This needs to be fixed in future versions of that. But the simple fact is that I can flip it, uh, you know, a, a heavy majority of the time. And th th there aren't that many smaller, bu I'm sorry, there aren't that many budget front flippers. And so I, I kind of, I'm a little bit torn here. I mean, at some level, it gives people a decent way to try a front flipper without dropping too, too much money. That's, that's probably a good thing. But at the same time, I, you know, I don't know. Um, it's, and it puts in decent work, especially with this blade once you make it happen. But the, I, I don't know. I, if you go up a little bit further, if you can get one, of course, you can get the Booze Blade Smoke, which is a really, really nice front flipper. Doesn't have those issues and has a lot of the same benefits going on here. But for me, I, I don't know. This guy is just a little bit too finicky and slippery to come anywhere near the gem list. And the next version could absolutely use some shaving at the top. But, I, I guess if you're after something less expensive and still front flippy, and particularly if you got longer thumbs, I don't know. My the, the reason why I'm sort of tempering this is that I just don't know how much of this is my particular hand issue. I don't have super long thumbs, and so I can imagine a world in which if you did and you had very easy purchase on the clip down here, this would be a whole different world. I, so maybe you, maybe your mileage is going to vary, but at least for me, based on my own personal experience, I, I don't know that I recommend this guy. It's a nice knife. It's got a lot of good Good stuff going for it, but it was just let down at the very, very last minute by that flipping issue, and uh, yeah, that's not a beautiful thing to me. So anyways, there you go. Um, I, I 
hope that this has been interesting, and I do hope that the next version of this is able to metamorph into a better front flip by virtue of some better texturings and things like that. Um, but I guess if you're after something inexpensive and uh, front flippy, this guy might be worth uh, giving a flip about. I don't know. I hope this has been interesting to you. Have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. And hey, if you've got one of these, let me know in the comments if you're having the same flipping issues, because that would actually be helpful to see whether this is a, you know, LBH issue or whether this is a... Uh, generalized problem with the design. Uh, anyways, hope this has been interesting. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.